Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palace. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I would seek thy good. Come on and put those Holy Ghost hands together. Anybody excited about being in the Lord's house one more time? Can y'all shout hallelujah one time? Can y'all shout thank you Jesus one time? Can you just give God a thundering roar of praise? I don't know about you, but I am glad to be in the number one more time. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'll get to you after a while, say, I'm glad, I'm glad. Ain't no need to sit here mad all day. Let's just shout for a little bit. Let's tell the Lord, thank you. Amen, amen, amen. I am ready to have a Holy Ghost time. Y'all can, can be seated. Um, I'm going to bring up our lecturer. He is none other than our own. He is our Bible expository. Um, pastor King Solomon Baker. He is the proud pastor of the Spock Level Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, any of the Spock Level members here yet? I know they're on the way. Amen. And I want you to receive him. We have some handouts. If our ushers can come on and grab these. Sister Francis is making more copies um, so that everybody can have a copy. And we are just going to let him take us to where God is taking him. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise as he comes. Good evening. Thank you so much for our moderator. Amen. And we are, we are honored. And it's a privilege. We thank God for our moderator. Amen. He's doing such a fine job. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Amen. And it's just good that, you know, he's got vision to carry us. All right, we want you to look with us if you have your Bibles. I mean, if you have your, we, we, we're going to use the Bible, but we also are going to follow. I put together a few notes here, and I'm going to try to be brief. He told me I got 15 minutes, so <laughs> I can't waste time. Amen. But let me say a quick word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Bless us and keep us right now in your presence and in your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to talk about, we kind of, the moderator kind of told us we got a theme based on unity in the church. And we're going to talk a little bit about unity. And as I said, you know, I'm still new. We will be pastor of Spark Lever in May will be three years. They called me on the Mother's Day three years ago. That was the first sermon that I preached there on Mother's Day. So we were, uh, so this year would be three years. Uh, my wife passed away about two months later. They asked me if I would come and be pastor. And I told them no at first. But the Lord said, go. You understand, maybe you need a change. Because I didn't think I was ready. I was just trying to deal with her. And we were married 36 years. And the Lord took her. Amen. But then God, I guess, God wanted me to get remarried. So I married Spark Level. <laughs> That's my bride now. That's my, you understand? Yeah, yeah. So, the, you know, the church and the pastor. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about unity. And, bro, I don't have a watch on for the president, uh, the moderator. Somebody just let me know. My time is up. Okay. Huh? Yeah, give me a minute. When it get to a minute, say, Reverend, you got one minute. All right? But if you have the handouts that we gave you, okay, uh, I really had things a little mixed up. I thought we were starting last night, but we started tonight, okay? And I guess I just didn't pay attention to the moderator had it out there. But I did. I was kind of mixed up a little bit. I saw the other flyer, and it said starting on Monday night. So I called him. I said, no, that ain't what he told me. No, it's Wednesday night. Okay, so we're here. Uh, so we want to talk about, uh, we, we put together a theme, you see at the top there, unity of the believers. And we said one, one God, one church. Okay? And so as I sat down, I asked the question to myself, 
you know, you know, not like Mr. Brown, but self. What, you know, why do we need unity? Why do we need unity in the church? So when I began to ponder that question, the first thing came to me was, because that's what Jesus, who is our founder, that's what he mandates, that's what he wants. Everybody got the copies, or you're getting them, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about, okay? Because the first point that we make here is that, you know, the church should be one. And because of our founder and our head ordained that it should be that way, that, you know, uh, uh, you know, he founded the church. If you look here, he says the founder and the head, you know, wanted us to be united. Now, uh, uh, so here it say he founded the church on the principles of unity. Y'all got that? All right, that's what, you know, if we're not united, we're not God's church. Okay, and there are some foundational things that unites us. We're united first around Christ, okay? And so it say that, you know, look with me, if you will, in, in, in Colossians 1.18, that's the first verse that we want to look at, okay? Colossians 1.18, if you have it. Uh, uh, really, I printed it. Now, some of these verses, I printed them because you know, now I, I ain't saying nothing about nobody else, but I don't use them but the King James. So I printed them, you understand? I printed them and I'm an old fashioned type guy that still reads from the King James, okay? So I printed, when I, when I read scriptures, I want it to come from there, okay? So it say, I, I found them and I head wants us to be one. He founded the church on the principle of, of unity. Now, Christ founded the church before the foundation of the world. That's the spiritual foundation, y'all with me? You know, in Ephesians, they say he loved us. When he talks about the church in Ephesians chapter one, you understand, he said he blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's what he did. When did he do it? Well, it says before the foundation of the world. He loved us before the foundation of the world. So with God, the church, you understand, with us, the church began when Christ came and set up the church. But when the mind of God, the church is eternal. It existed before the foundation of the world. Y'all follow me? Okay, so it's a, you know, so it says now, he is the head and he is the beginning. If you will, okay, uh, 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 I just want to make sure we got this verse right here in, in Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, we're going, to, we're going to try to deal with that for a little bit, okay? In Colossians chapter 1, and I know I got to move fast, so I guess I need to move on because Brother, brother, <laughs> brother Taylor's going to come and preach, and, 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 and he's a good preacher. He's my friend. I've been knowing him ever since he was a young fellow. So anyways, and... Uh, Okay, it says now, so, so, so Christ is the head of the church, all right? It's his church. It ain't yours. It ain't mine. It's Christ's. We, I know y'all say, well, that's elementary. We know that, okay? But sometimes we don't act like that. All of us know that, but it don't, belong to, it don't even belong to the pastor. Amen. It belongs to Christ. Amen. So he says he is the head, Okay. He, you know, he is the head of the body. It's a body. The, he is the head of the church, all right, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So we talk about Christ. When you look here in Colossians, the scripture says that he was the firstborn from the dead, all right? What does that mean? Well, that don't mean that you understand that, well, Christ existed through eternity. But you, when, it, when it relates to the church as it relates to the church. Him being the firstborn from the dead is that he is the originator of the church, okay? And we'll deal with that in the next, you understand? So when you read here, I just wanna read this verse and then we will move on in Colossians chapter one, verse number 18, all right? It says that, uh, let, me, let me just, I'm gonna pull in there 
a few, in verse 17, it says, he, he is before all things, and by him all things exist. But he is the head of the body, the church, who is from the beginning, all right? He's the firstborn from the dead, and that he might have preeminence. Now, I want to deal with just a couple of things there, and i got to move fast. So he say he is the beginning. The word beginning means the, the originator, the cause. You understand, when you see that word in, in the beginning, God, okay, E-I-M and E, it means the beginning, the first, the, the, the you know, with, 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 with God, everything has its being and his foundation in him. And you know, I say all the time, if when you open up the Bible, there's four words that if you don't believe, shut the book and don't bother it no more. The first four words. In the beginning, God. If you don't believe that, then you don't need to read no more because you're going to have problems. You got to believe that it's God. It's all about him. Okay? Every entity, God put it there. God was the founder of the church. Okay? So it says now, the church, look here, it says, in the beginning, he was the cause and the originator. Now, I got a couple of bullets there. You see, the church began in him. Y'all see that? That's the cause. The church was established in him. That's the origin. He originated it. Now, some of y'all may disagree, but these are just some words I came up with. Okay? I think, you know, it originated with Christ. And it is grounded in him. So the church began in him. It was established by him. It is grounded in him. Oh, y'all got it? So he's the founder. He founded it. He grounded it. And then the last point, we say he has preeminence. That's what the verse says. What does preeminence mean? Y'all understand? The word in the Greek means first place. He's first, everything, he has first place. It's all about him. So if we can be united, that's what unites us. When we are all about Christ. It's, you understand? Paul says that I don't, you understand? He talks about not having schisms in the body. Well, if you focus on Jesus and I focus on him, what are we fighting about? You understand? We ain't got nothing to fight about. If you came to worship Christ, you understand, and I'm worshiping Christ, that ought to put us on one accord. You understand? We ought to be united. All right? So the next point, you understand, the, you know, the second point that we make, Christ is our example. You understand? Not only does he want us to be uni unified, but he tells us and shows us how we ought to have unity, if y'all understand. He was an example. Well, when he came to the earth, look at our first point here, all right? In, 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 in uh, St. John chapter 10, I, I, I won't spend a little more time on each one of these, but we're going to try to cover everything, okay? Now, it said, Christ is our example of unity. What is unity? Oneness. Well, how did Christ, how did Christ portray that? Well, he said, I am one. With who? With the Father. When he prayed the prayer, you understand? He said, I'm one with the Father. And in John 10, 30, he said, I and my Father are one. There's no separation. There's no division. Okay, so he first led by example and showed us how to be one. Okay, because you, you, you know, so it says here, he says, uh, uh, you know, uh, I and my father are one, even when he prayed. You understand? So, because they were one, they automatically had fellowship. That's one of the things that, that the church has to have. In Acts 2 42, it says, after the church started, they had four things. That the, that the old church, he said, they continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayer. But the fellowship is key. The devil knows that. Y'all understand? That's what's hurting the church now because after COVID, we lost some of the fellowship. We don't come together like we used to. And there's power in fellowship. I can watch church on TV, but I can't give you a hug when you need a hug. You understand? I can't sometimes. You understand? He said, weep with those that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. Y'all understand? Just a simple handshake makes a lot of difference. 
Yeah, you know, we can't, we can't fellowship, give handshakes anymore. Now, I know all that went on in science and all that type of stuff, but some of that stuff, you got you to, gotta, the devil is behind it. He don't want you to fellowship, all right? But God does. But Christ had perfect fellowship with the Father. When he prayed in the, in the, in, in the, in, when the Christ prayed in St. John chapter 17, he said, I pray that they may, may be one as we are one, that they may have fellowship as we have fellowship. See, you, you understand, understand one thing about the church. Fellowship is not two fellows in a ship. You understand? That don't bring fellowship. You may both be in there, but that don't mean you fed fellowship. Fellowship means that we have something in common. What's common ground? You understand? So, so, so I, you know, I think, you know, I like to look at words and break them up like that. All right. But anyways, he said now, not only was he one with the Father, but in, he was also one with the Spirit. Amen. Some of us, we have three members in the church and they can't get along. You understand? Yeah, it, God wouldn't like that. If we're gonna be, we, if we're gonna use Christ as our example, you, you know, when they got mad with him in Saint John chapter nine, because he healed the blind man, and and then they start talking about you claiming that you're God, you're claiming that you're this, and Jesus say, I am. Really, in chapter five, they start talking about uh, we knew Moses and we accepted Moses, and Jesus said, you couldn't have called if you knew Moses, you would know me. He wrote of me. He said, I'm the law. I am God. So he said, I am, you understand? So when you get to the next point, he said, I'm also, the, you understand? He said, when I leave, the comforter is coming. Okay? And, 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 and the Father's going to send him in my name. Y'all got that? You understand? There was a, there, you, 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 you know, when Christ came, Christ came as God. He came as a man, but he was still God. Y'all know what they call the hypothetical union, that he was 100% God, but as well as 100% man, right. all right? So he wasn't 50-50. He was 100, 100. He was 100% man. He was 100% God. But in who he was, he brought man and God together. Y'all understand? That's unity. He united us. He put us together, and we are one. Because we're in Christ. Amen. So that's where, you, you know, and, 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 and maybe tomorrow night. But anyway, you understand, the church is his and is attached to him. Y'all understand? We got to, if you're going to be a part of his church, all right, when we get to the third point here now, he said the church is attached to Jesus. And what is Jesus? He's the head. What is the church? The body. One head. One body. See, you know, we got two, sometimes in our churches, we got two or three heads. Anything that's got two heads, anything that's got two heads, it's deformed. Yeah, it's messed up. That's right. You understand? Yeah, God didn't do that. You understand? He's Christ is the head of the church. It's his church. It's, and we are the body. And our job is to follow the head. And see, one thing about it, God has never had. I know in our churches today, we got pastors, we got co-pastors. You understand, I ain't never found that in the scripture. I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to melt a little bit before I sit out. You all understand, I just have to do it. But anyway, you understand, ain't no such thing. Moses had two million people when he was out there leading. Y'all remember? Over two million people out there leading. But every time God spoke, he only spoke to Moses. He didn't speak to Aaron. He didn't speak to her. Joshua, well, he didn't speak to Joshua until Moses went off the scene. God only got one man in charge. That's who he's going to talk to. Y'all, you know, see, we got too many little churches inside of the church. Amen. That's what Paul was talking about. We can't have schisms in the body. Yeah, you know, we all make up the body of Christ. Whatever I'm doing, whatever you doing, and, and well, I can't deal with all these scriptures right now, but we'll deal with this, okay? And, and, and Romans 12, now just tell me about my already when it's over. Come on. It's over. Sit down. <laughs> I, I, I can follow orders. I just ain't got my watch on me on that, so you got to let me know that it's over. You know, it's time. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
brother. But yeah. All right. All right. Bless you. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Now, that, that was some good teaching. A amen, amen. And, and, and because we got a, a good crowd, we want to do what we say. Because we want this crowd to come back tomorrow with your friends and your neighbors. Somebody say amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to have our deacons come up real quick. Uh, Pastor Tillman is going to uh, preside tonight, but he'll be coming up after um, our deacons. And uh, we've already been called to worship. Put our hands together for our moderator emeritus, Pastor Hawkins, here tonight. Give him and Lady Queen a hand clap of praise. Um, they're here tonight. Um, bless God for our Congress President and his lovely wife that's here tonight. Give Pastor Pringle and Lady Pringle a hand clap of praise. We bless God for our Union President, which is his, is his first union, uh, Pastor Tillman and Sister Tillman. Give them a hand clap of praise. Uh, we just bless God for them. Uh, our Women's President, I'm sure she is on the way. Our layman, come on layman, our layman's president, he will not be here tonight, but he will be here on tomorrow. Give these men the hand clap of praise um, because we're in for a treat tonight. Now while they coming, um, those of you, and we will give a quick preview of our covenant giving tonight, but those of you who are not uh, committed covenant partners, please make sure you enroll tonight um, in those churches who have not committed to covenant giving, please make sure you enroll tonight. Amen. Amen. Come on, give them another hand clap of praise. Um, we gave direction. Uh, Brother Kenny has the microphone. We're going to have a brief devotion. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my Burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down, every round goes higher and higher, since I laid my burdens down. Every round goes higher and higher since I laid my burden. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burden down. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down Scripture. Good evening. Our scripture will be coming from Psalm 62 from the NIV starting at verse 5. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, it's unfailing love. And your reward, everyone, according to what they have done. I've read verses 5 through 12 from Psalms 62 from the NIV. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. 
Most Heavenly Fathers, again, that we come before you on bending knees, Father God. We just want to say thank you one more time, Lord, for bringing us back into the house of the Lord one more time, Father God. And Father God, bless the pastor tonight after he bring the word, Father God. Let the words come out of his mouth like a be like a two-headed sword, cutting sin from right to left, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now, Father God. Just thank you, Father God, and bless our pastor tonight and his family, Father God. And Father God, just bless the present view family right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, those who come out and those who want to come out and couldn't come out, Father God. Just want to say thank you one more time, Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now, Father God. Father God, going to the nursing homes right now, Father God. Touch those in the nursing home, Father God. Let them know, Father God. God, that you are in charge, Father God, that you are Lord of Lord and King of King, Father God. And Father God, just going to the prison wall, Father God, and let them know, Father God, that you're still in charge, Father God. And Father God, there's someone that laid down last night. And if you call them by name, Father God, they couldn't answer you, Father God. And Father God, we just want to say thank you one more time, Father God. And Father God, just bless us tonight, Father God, this week we have on, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, Father God. And Father God, all these things I'm asking you, I know you have already done it, Father God. And Father God, don't forget, just stop by my house right now, Father God, and let them know, Father God, that you're still in charge and you're Lord of Lord and King of King. And all these things I'm asking in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Listen here now. Walk with my Father. Walk with me. Walk with my Father. Walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Come on now. Walk with my mother. Walk with me. Walk with my mother. Walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone, Lord. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone, Lord. Only me alone while I'm on this Jesus journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, victory today is mine. I 
told Satan, you better get oh victory today. Oh victory, victory, victory today. Oh, I told Satan, you better get. Oh, victory today. Well, love is mine. Love is mine. Love today. Oh, I told Satan, you better get. Well, love today. I said, joy, joy, joy. Joy is mine. Joy today. Well, I told Satan, you better get. Oh, love today is mine. Oh, when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring. Me out. Well, I fell on my knees. I cried, Lord, help me, please. I got up and shouted, Victory! Well, victory is mine. Victory! Victory! Oh, I told Satan, you better get. Well, victory today is mine. Oh, joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today. Well, I told Satan, you better get. Well, joy today is mine. Oh, when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring me out. Well, I fell on my knees. I cried, Lord, help me, please. I got up and shouted, victory. Well, victory is mine. Victory, victory, well, I told Satan, you better get thee behind, well, victory today, oh, victory, 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 Satan, I told Satan, I told Satan, I told Satan, I told Satan, oh, I told Satan, I told Satan, I told Satan, I told Satan, you better get the Satan, you better get behind me. Oh, victory today is mine. Hallelujah! 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 doing the theme song at the cross. (laughs) 
as everybody stand. cross
Oh, tell the Lord, thank you. I wonder if you're happy. The children used to say, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Y'all acting like y'all ain't happy. Some of the children get excited and say, if you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, why don't you just do your dance? Is that anybody happy today? Aren't you glad that God rose you up this morning? What a mighty God we serve. Amen, amen. I, I know some of y'all looking like we don't do all that in no union service. All oh, tell the Lord, say a change is coming, a change is coming, it's coming, it's coming. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. I thank God I'm having just an exciting time. I thank God for our union president who said, let's just do a revival. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise of doing such a great work thus far. Listen, it's giving time, but I want to take care of a couple housekeeping things. Listen, um, now, those of you who are familiar with the covenant giving, um, thank you. I want to share with you, out of 14 churches, we have five churches that have committed to our covenant giving. I'm going to congratulate that because it's something new. Come on, say amen. Um, and, and, and five is a good number. Now, now, in a few minutes, it'll be 14. Somebody say amen. Um, we, have, we have about uh, 33 officers, 33 officers. Out of the 33 officers, 17 of the 33 have committed to covenant partnering. Come on, give them a hand clap of praise. And then out of the 17, seven of them have paid their yearly amount already in full. Somebody say amen. Now, those of you who have agreed and have set, uh, started your covenant partnering, you are totally exempt from any enrollment, amen? But I gave the numbers, which mean we got folks sitting in here who are not covenant partners. Y'all come on, say amen. amen. Listen, at Pleasant View, they know when I'm talking and they get quiet, that mean I'm talking about them. So go and shout just so folk don't know I'm talking about you. And so if you are not a covenant giver, if you look in your program, your union enrollments are there. Um, churches will still wanting you to enroll with your $50. Um, Non-pastor or ministers, those of you who say God called you and who called yourself and you want to be a minister, you got to pay $20. Say amen. amen. All the officers of Bethel who are not covenant partners, your enrollment is $14, and everybody else is $10. Amen? Amen. And if you all would kindly take care of that before you leave, and that's different from your offering. Come on, say amen. amen. <laughs> so right now, we're going to get our offering together, and we're going to give a good offering tonight to help uh, our union president not come in the negative for this Holy Week revival. Is this okay? All right. So we're going to do this real quick. Everybody just grab $20 real quick. Um, just grab $20 out of your pocket. Um, ushers, come on down um, and get ready to guide us. Laymen, come on and grab these two baskets um, real quick so that we can give uh, of the way God said give. Now, uh, Bethel does have give um, just find us on GiveLify. Stay, I like that. And uh, you can give on GiveLify. Um, your enrollment in anything. Um, but just remember um, to go outside and pay your enrollment. Now, when you have your $20 up, uh, br Brother, brother uh, Harris, come on. Oh, okay, yeah, I see him. Um, lift your gifts and repeat after me and say, Dear God, here's my seed. Press it down. Shake it up. Run it over with good measure that men may give back to me. Amen. As this choir lead us in some of that good giving music, we're going to ask our ushers to come and give us some direction. And ever, and ever, 
Father, we certainly come thanking you, Heavenly Father, for this blessed opportunity to give, Heavenly Father, what you have granted us to give unto you. God, we ask Heavenly Father, bless this association, these churches, Heavenly Father, these members, Heavenly Father. We ask Heavenly Father that this often be pressed down, shaken up, and run it over to do your will, your way, only through your word. This we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very kindly. I am going to just deviate a little bit and go ahead and introduce to some and present to others our preacher for these next few nights. Um, if anyone have not heard of this preacher, I'm going to have you to go ahead and fasten your seat belt. Somebody say amen. Um, this is none other than a person that I call a close dear friend. I don't have but a few of them, amen. You know, the Bible does talk about if you want a friend, you must first show yourself friendly. And you know, preachers, I know Pastor Hawkins will agree with it, sometimes preachers don't show themselves to be friendly. Somebody say amen. Let's just say church folk, amen. Um, but uh, uh, Pastor Adrian S. Taylor is a uh, awesome, awesome young man in the gospel. Uh, he is the very proud pastor of the Spring Hill uh, Missionary Baptist Church in uh, the big city of Gainesville, Florida. Go Gators. Uh, I'm going to try that again. Go Gators. Yeah, I knew I had some. Y'all get this done there? Yeah, don't leave me hanging. Uh, he is also a graduate uh, from there. He carries several degrees. Um, he served as uh, one of the vice presidents of the Chamber of Commerce um, in Gainesville. So he's a very sharp, business-minded man, um, very progressive young man. Um, he serves the Florida General Baptist Convention as well as uh, the Florida Baptist Convention, um, where he's duly aligned and he loves the Lord. Now, he is the husband of Dr. Uh, Courtney Taylor. Um, his wife is a professor um, at UF uh, in African American culture. Um, and he is uh, the father of his lovely, lovely daughter, who I always call the boss. Um, she runs everything. Um, he's been the pastor for about 19 years um, at uh, Spring Hill, and we have been friends 
for right around about 16 years. Um, I ended up going back, well not back, I left Orlando to go to Gainesville uh, approximately 16 years ago and he and I met and we have been friends ever since. Um, I want you to know he will preach, he can preach, and he is going to preach. Now, whether you say amen or not, that's your prerogative, but I promise you before it's over with, you'll say ouch. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, um, Pastor Tillman, our president, is going to come and read us our scripture. Um, this Bethel Choir, and they are awesome. Give them a hand clap of praise. Amen. And then these musicians are off the charts as well. Amen. And after, after the scripture, we're going to hear from this choir, but then we're going to be uh, blessed by none other than the moderator of the Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Association and the pastor of the Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church, none other than my friend, my brother, um, Pastor Adrian S. Taylor. Hear ye him in the name of Jesus. Our scripture for tonight um, is Romans chapter 10. And those of you who can, and if you will, stand with me for the reading of the word. Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend unto the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall we call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who shall believe our report? So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen, Amen to the reading of the word. The splendor the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice oh he wraps himself in light darkness tries to hide I tremble at his voice. I tremble at his voice. Help me say, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great is 
song, God. Oh, we'll sing. How great is our God. Yes. L listen. H2H stands and time is in his hands begin the end the end begin the end the end oh the God had three and one the Father Spirit Son the lion, the lamb, the lion, the lamb. All over the building. How great is our God. Sing with me. Is our God. Oh, all we see. How great. You're the name above all names. You're the name above all names. Anybody know he's worthy? You are worthy of Lift your hands all around the building. In my heart, heart we'll see. Is our God. Has he been good to you? Lift your voice and say, You're the name above. So many times you brought me out of all of my situations. And I got to say, thank you, Jesus, in my heart. We'll see how it is our God. All of the building. Oh, how great, how great is our God. I like to go back. Listen. This is my soul. My Savior God to thee. Anybody know how great? How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art. Building. Lift your hands if you know he's been great to you. How great now? How great? How great now? Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, we say thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love that you've given us today. Father, we pray that you would forgive us of our sins, take away our faults, our failures, and our unrighteousness. Create within us clean hearts, O oh God, and renew right spirits within us. Search our hearts and find if there is any way in us that is not like you and remove it in the name of Jesus. Father, as we have gathered here tonight, we thank you for this union. 
and we thank you for the unity of the fellowship. We thank you for brothers and sisters being able to come together and praise together and pray together, sing songs and lift our voices together, lifting up the name of Jesus. We pray that you would bless the ties that binds our hearts in Christian love. Father, we thank you for this great association, this moderator and the entire leadership and membership of this association. Would you continue to walk with them, go with them and stand by them. But now as we take on the sacred moment of opening your word, we pray that you would open our minds and help us to understand. Soften our hearts, Heavenly Father, and help us to spiritually receive. Father, we pray that our lives are changed through your holy word. If someone here is not saved, save him, save her tonight by the power of grace divine, letting them know that the Lord Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried, but three days later you raised him from the dead. For all of us, Heavenly Father, we pray that you sanctify us, draw us closer to thy precious bleeding side. And Lord, we pray that we all are going through one struggle or another, one burden or another, one problem or another. Will you please strengthen us all and help us to continue to run this race with patience. And we will be careful to give your name thanks, praise, honor, and glory unto the coming of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. All of God's children said amen. 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 Will you give God praise for our ushers, our band, and the choir, our deacons. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We thank God for his love that he's given us another opportunity to come together and to praise his wonderful name and to worship together. And uh, we praise God for the blessed privilege of being here tonight. We want to recognize uh, the union president, Pastor Tillman. Let's give God praise for him again and his great service. Amen. He is a humble servant of God, and we are so appreciative by his humble service. We want to thank God for the women's president of this association, Sister Myers. God bless you, my dear sister. Amen. To uh, Congress president, amen. Our Congress president, let's give God praise for our Congress president. Amen. And to the uh, moderator emeritus, God bless you, moderator emeritus. God bless you. We love you. Pastor Hawkins. Amen. And to the vice moderators of this association, amen. We're grateful for them as well. Give God praise for the vice moderators. And, uh, and then, of course, to my friend whom we will celebrate continually. Uh, when I uh, took on the task of serving as moderator of the Jerusalem Association at the uh, wise age of 44, or, or 43, I, I think I might have been 43 at that point, um, it was Kaysen who said, man, I'll be right there with you. I'll be right there with you. And then a few months later, he was right there gone. <laughs> and left me by myself. <laughs> But thank God I've been able to lean on seals, but, uh, and I've, had, I've, I've been blessed with two other uh, vice moderators that I'm grateful, but Kaysen and I uh, were looking forward to serving together because we had a mindset of uh, it's great to be a part of an association, but we needed to clarify what does it mean to be a part of a local association. That so many people had for so many years gotten a wrong mindset about what an association is and what an association does so that people looked and approached the work of an association from the consumer mindset saying what do I get out of the association uh, but that's the wrong mentality to have uh, because our approach should be what can we do together as a part of the Lord's local churches and association not what do we get out but what do we give in order to lift up the name of Jesus and to shed light in a dark world, amen. And so we set out to try to create a model uh, that was uh, centered on lifting up the name of Jesus and strengthening churches and church leaders uh, to serve this present age. And uh, I am so uh, amazed to see the, the great work that was already established in this great association, but then to see that it continue under a new moderator. Uh, hats off to you all for serving God together and realizing that it's not about me, not about him, not about you, but it's about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen. So God bless you, and I am honored. I am honored to be here uh, to share with you tonight. Now, uh, let me say that uh, we will not be here long. Uh, this will uh, be a short night tonight because I want you to come back, but also I'm a little tired. I've been running all week long, uh, and uh, I started off this morning running to different events. I had to make appearances, and then I had to go by the church. Sister Woods, God answered my prayer. <laughs> I prayed, I needed a, an administrative, a, a, a business administrator at the church that could handle church operations so I wouldn't have to do so much. And I told Casey, I said, man, I need a Sister Woods. And so I said, let's pray about that. And bless God, God gave me a Sister Woods at the church. <laughs> Amen. And I, I'm praying she'll stay there with me as long as I'm there and she'll be there as long as you've been here. Amen. <laughs> A, a longer, amen, <laughs> amen, so I am so grateful to God, and I'm blessed, but I had to stop by there, and she had some stuff for me to sign off on, and I had other things to get done, and then I jumped on the road and raced here and fought through traffic to get here, and uh, I went by the KFC. I wanted to get me some chicken before I came to church. You know, I'm a Baptist preacher. I got to have some chicken, <laughs> and there was a sign on the door. We closed today. I said, my God. Well, thanks be to God, I was able to run right around the corner and I, I got me some Popeyes. And so I got three wings and a biscuit. And uh, I came in here and sat down in the office and I'm trying to eat. And, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm, my, my mama raised me right. Uh, Anna Mae told me, she said, baby, anytime you have some food, offer it to the other people around you. I didn't have but three wings and a biscuit. <laughs> but... But I said, well, do Jesus. I'll be like Jesus when he had those two fish and five barley loaves, you know. <laughs> and so I offered the brethren some. And Alan said, man, you ain't got enough there. You ain't got but three. You need to at least have six. I said, man, if I eat six uh, wings tonight, y'all ain't going to hear no preaching. I'm going to bed. <laughs> you better let me just get my little snack in, you know. And uh, so I had those three wings, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> And I feel a little better now, all right? But we're not going to be long tonight. We're not going to be long tonight. I believe about 25 minutes will be all I need if you all say amen and we'll get it done. Look at that. Y'all learning already. <laughs> my, my daughter went with me. We had a, I had an outing. I've been preaching all month, just about every week. I've been preaching somewhere. Uh, you know, you got to do that stuff as moderator. And so... Uh, I, I told the crowd, I said, I'm only going to be up 20 minutes, and my daughter shook her head. Uh, she said, no way, Daddy, you're not going to do that, because she, she swears that I preach too long on Sundays and that her friends in the Sunday school class, uh, they just look at her and laugh and say, your daddy's going long again today. <laughs> but uh, I told her, I said, 20 minutes, and when we got in the car, she said, Daddy, I don't believe it. You got it done in 20 minutes. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do tonight, 25 minutes, and we're done, all right? I love the Lord Jesus and I love his word. Would you join me in his word in the book of 1 John? The book of 1 John. The Bible is split into two halves. You have the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament shares uh, the law of God and the providential plan of God in his story. And then in the New Testament, you see the grace of God unfold. New Testament, Old Testament has 39 books, 27 in the New and uh, they are split into three sections. The historical books, that's the first five books of the New Testament, are the historical books. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the book of Acts. And then you get to the middle portions, which are the largest portion of the New Testament. That is the epistles of the New Testament. Uh, the predominant of those are written by the Apostle Paul. But here, just before the one apocalyptic writing, which is Revelation, you get to the three little Johns just before Jude. And in the three little Johns, they are written by the apostle uh, John, who is now old and up in years, but he shares his convictions on the Lord Jesus Christ. First John chapter one. When you found it, the word of God reads, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. 
that which we have seen and heard declare unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I want to talk for just a few minutes uh, from uh, the theme that I will use for the entire week uh, out of 1 John. Every night we'll look at 1 John chapter number 1. I want to talk about the fellowship of the saints, the fellowship of the saints as an overarching uh, conversation uh, going in, in, in alignment with my dear friend, Pastor Baker. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about we have fellowship with the word. Yeah. Fellowship with the word. Fellowship with the word. Uh, beloved, here we are in this beautiful writing that is by John. And I happen to love the Johnine writings, including the Johnine Gospel, because different from the others, John shares an intimate view and an intimate look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, well. When you read the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew's Gospel is all about uh, Jesus as the Messiah or as the King in his royalty. Matthew goes through great strains linking Jesus up with the lineage of David so that when you read Matthew chapter number one, you see very clearly on display that Matthew is trying to point us to the fact that Jesus is the Messiah that was promised to David in 2 Samuel chapter number seven. Yeah. Then when you go over to the gospel of Mark, Mark's gospel is written that shows us very plainly, not the royalty of Jesus, but shows us the humility of Jesus. For in, in, the, in the gospel of Mark, you see Jesus not as a king, but you see him as a servant. Yeah. And so yeah. there's a repetitive phrase that goes throughout the book of Mark that Mark continues to say, and straightway. It shows that Jesus does not have time to sit and, and meander, doesn't have time to loiter, but he is always on the move and always doing his father's business. Right. Lord, I wish to God we had more mindsets in the local church like that, that we don't have time to just sit on our laurels. We don't have yeah. time to just sit on, as uh, that great philosopher Otis Redden said, sitting on the dock of the bay, <laughs> watching the tide roll away sitting on the dock of the bay wasting time. We, we don't have any time to waste for the days are short yeah, yeah. and the night is dark and we need to be busy about our father's business. Right. Have I witnessed tonight? Yeah. Well, not only do we see in Matthew's gospel the royalty, in Mark's gospel the humility, but in Luke's gospel we see the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke, the great physician, goes through strains in teaching us and showing us and telling us about the physical characteristics of Jesus and letting us know that he is not uh, simply a superhuman, but he is indeed 100% man, as Pastor Baker has said, that, that, that he cries like others cry, he hurts like others hurt, he gets tired like others get tired, and, and in that way he understands all of our condition. Yeah. I thank God that as the Hebrew writer said, we have a high priest that cannot be touched with our infirmities, but, but, but he knows intimately the strains and the stresses we deal with in this life. Yeah. Have I witnessed children of God? Well, here, not only do we see the, bless God, we see the royalty of Jesus in Matthew, the humility of Jesus in Mark, the humanity of Jesus in the book of Luke, but we also see, beloved, uh, in John's gospel, the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. For John does not show us just, just the fact that Jesus was a man, but he shows us that Jesus indeed is the God-man. He is the theanthropic being. He is God's perfect man, and he's man's perfect God. In John's gospel, we see that he is God in flesh, living and dwelling among us. And John says that we have here in this gospel that we have fellowship with one another, but our fellowship is brought about by our fellowship with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, Let yeah. me say this to you, yeah. children of God, that uh, Pastor Baker was right. That word fellowship is more than we try to make it today. Right. Matter of fact, at the Spring Hill Church, we, we don't call the place where we dine and eat the fellowship hall because I said that I've been in church all my life. 
And I know people that'll sit down and eat chicken in one setting and turn around and curse each other in the parking lot in another setting. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Just because we sit down and have uh, uh, fried chicken and our cholesterol is already too high and we drink some sweet tea that's too sweet that runs our blood sugar up doesn't mean we have fellowship with each other. Y'all say man a little bit here, y'all too quiet. Fellowship mean that we have a partnership come from the Greek word koinonia. It means that we are together in the work of the Lord. That means when you rise, I rise, but when you're down, I'm down. It means when you are well, I'm well, but when you hurt, I hurt as well. We have fellowship, we have partnership one with another. But brothers and sisters, now don't be deceived because that fellowship is hard to achieve. Because it cannot be achieved in the flesh. Yeah. Pastor Hawkins, it, it can't be achieved based on our human standards. Yeah. Because based on our human standards, we got too many egos. Yeah. Right, right. Based on our human standards, yes. we got too much pride. Yeah. Based on our human standards, we got too much jealousy. Yeah. Soon as we see somebody, God is elevating. Soon as we see somebody, God is blessing in our flesh. Yeah. We say stuff like, well, he ain't no better than me. And She's no better than me. Yeah. But, but when you have real fellowship, you're glad to see your sister or brother doing well in the Lord. Have I witnessed tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you really have fellowship with each other, you don't walk around worrying about the pastor didn't call my name because you didn't show up for the pastor to call your name. You showed up to hear is there a word from the Lord. You, you, you came to hear the name of Jesus because after all your name might be nice and your, your name might be given to you by mama and by daddy and by, by your auntie and uncle but, but, but his name is above every name. Yeah. Have I witnessed him? Yeah. Yeah. So, so fellowship, that, that partnership comes when we are brought together at the cross of Calvary. Yeah. When we come together in Jesus Christ we are brought together uh, male and female, bond and free, rich and poor, educated and uneducated. There is level ground at the cross. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Y'all gonna pray tonight, aren't you? Yeah, let, let, no, no, no big eyes and little U's. There's no inequity and inequality at the cross because all of us come to the cross as sinners in need of God's holy grace. Well, well, here he said we got fellowship, but he said, now we got fellowship in the word of life. Uh -huh. Now, now I, I got three things I want to tell you about this, and we'll, we'll leave it alone. Number one, I want you to know that we have fellowship with an eternal word. Yeah. Yeah. Fellowship with an eternal word. I'm preaching right out of the Bible. That's it. Dr. That's Allen, it. he said, that which was from the beginning. Yeah. That, that's what he said. That's what my Bible said. That's what yours ought to say, huh? That which was from the beginning. Now, what, what John is saying here is that in this word, beginning, is different from the other word that he used in his gospel account in John chapter 1, verse number 1. But here, this word, beginning, refers to before his incarnation. It means that Jesus did not just show up at the point that he was birthed from Mary's womb. But thanks be to God that there never was a time he was not. And so he is an eternal word. Now you and I got here at a point in time, but time got here in him. Yes. Can I get a witness here? He, he said that which was from the beginning. Now do understand this, that, that Jesus' origin is in eternity, whereas your origin and my origin is at a point in time for most of us in the 20th century. Yeah, yeah, as a matter of fact, my point in time when I came into being was probably, as it is told, about uh, 1978. In the summer of 78, after an OJ's concert, when the OJ's got finished singing. I guess you've got your hooks in me. When they got finished singing about the stairway to heaven. For some of y'all, it was after a Sam Cooke song, a Sam Cooke concert, huh? But for some of y'all, it was after Nat King Cole, huh? For some, it was after Luther Bandross got finished singing, huh? 
Can I get a witness here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but either way, no matter when it was, we showed up at a point in time. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? But I'm here to tell you that even before that night in Bethlehem of Judea, when that young virgin girl birthed a, a, a male child, he was already here. Yeah. That which was from the beginning. But not only that, not only that, brothers and sisters, you, you must understand from him being an eternal word that John has fixed in his mind the idea that Jesus was not just here before his incarnation, but he was here before creation. Yeah. For in his gospel account, he says, uh, he, he says, in the beginning. Yeah. Now that word beginning goes all the way back to Genesis chapter number one, yeah. verse number one. Yeah. You know what Genesis 1-1 one, one is, don't you? Yeah, you've been to Sunday school. You know what it said. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah, yeah. What John says in his gospel account is that Jesus was present even before God said, let there be. The power of Jesus and the presence of Jesus was already there. As a matter of fact, it was the power of Jesus that got to work when God said, let there be. And all the forces in creation got in the starting block. All the forces in creation said, which one of us is going to go? Wind thought it was his turn. Light thought it was his turn. Uh, 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 water thought it was their turn. But God said, let there be light. And light came bursting forth out of the starting block. Split night and dark in half. Said before anything was, Jesus already was. And can I tell you this? That's why I'm glad to know Jesus as my Savior. Because I need a Savior that doesn't start in time. But time starts in Him. Oh yes sir. Yes sir. Here, here what God this does for John is God says to John who is arguing against the agnostics. Who said that Jesus was not a real person. That Jesus was just a, a ghost or an apparition or a figment of the apostles imagination. What John says no he wasn't a figment of our imagination. Because he's been here even before we were here. He was here even before you were here. He was here before anything was that is and anything shall be. Jesus is and friend that's why you and I have fellowship with Jesus because we got somebody we can depend on despite what the times may be yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if y'all pray a little bit better I'll get to my runway can I tell you this times have changed but he hadn't changed people have changed but he hasn't changed circumstances have changed but he hasn't changed he's the same yesterday today and forevermore as a matter of fact, he's the same one that Moses talked about in Psalm number 90 when he said, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. That meant he's not trying to be God. That means he's not fixing to be God. That means he's not working to be God. That means he's not shall be God. He is God. I wish I had a witness here. No matter who's in the governor's mansion every four years, he's still God. No matter who's in the White House every four years, he's God. No matter how the Senate changes, how the legislature changes, he is God. No matter what Putin does in Russia, he's still God. No matter what Castro's descendants do down in Cuba, he's still God. No matter what your enemies do and, and the devil tried to do, he's still God. That which was from the beginning. Yeah, he said we have fellowship with an eternal word. And I'm here to tell you I'm glad about that. I'm glad about it because I have somebody I can depend on. And he's the same somebody my grandmama depended on. But I'm depending on him right now. And I thank God my baby girl that Pastor Kaysen referenced. My baby girl learned to trust him for herself. And when I'm long gone and my eyes have been closed and my tongue cleaved to the roof of my mouth and my arms have been folded across my breast, I'm going to leave her in the hands of the Lord and I know he's eternal. He can go with her when I can't go. He'll be with her when I can't be with her. He'll stand with her when I can't stand with her. He's an eternal word, but not only. Not only. Not only Pringle is he an eternal word, yeah, yeah. but he is an evidence word. Oh, that's preaching, man. That which was from the beginning, uh -huh. which we have heard, yeah, yeah. which we have seen with our eyes, well, 
which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. Well, now you must understand what he's doing there. He's talking to Gnostics or agnostics. He's talking to people that live in the realm of empiricism. The, these are scientists that, that, and, and philosophers that say if it's not tangible and if they can't put their hands on it, then it must not be real. Yeah. They, 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 they thought that Jesus could not be real in a material sense because they said all matter is, is sinful and, and is corrupted. But, but what John says is no, not only is he not corrupted and not only is, is, is he material, but, but he is an eternal evidence word in our lives. You see, the challenge was with the Gnostics is they said, well, if Jesus wasn't real, then then we can't trust him as the true and living God. Yeah. And so what was happening is in the context, people were leaving the faith because they didn't know if they could depend on the faith that they had received from the apostles. Yeah. And so what John says, since, since y'all need evidence, since, since you are from, from Greece, uh, uh, or in northern Greece, where, where this uh, letter is written to the believers in Asia Minor, he said, since, since you're, you're, you're in this area of Asia Minor, but you act like you're from Missouri, the show me state, I'm going to have to give you some empirical evidence that Jesus is real. Yeah. He said, that which we have heard. Right. Now that, how do you hear? Which you uh-huh. Yeah, that which we have seen. How do you see? With your eyes. Yeah, yeah. That which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. Yeah. He said, not only do I know he's real, but I heard him with my ears. Tell me, John, when did you hear him? John said, I heard him on the Sea of Galilee as he's walking on the shore. Yeah. And said, come and I'll make you fishers of men. Yeah. John said, I got out the boat with my brother John and we left our father Zebedee in the boat because we heard the voice of Jesus calling unto us. John, tell me, when did you hear him? John said, I heard him one day up on the, uh, up on the mountain there as he's preaching and he's giving the Beatitudes and he's telling, blessed are they which thirst and do hunger for theirs is the kingdom of God. John, tell me, when did you hear him? John said, I heard him up on the mountain transfiguration as he's expounding the word of God under a John, John, when did you hear him? John said, I heard him on the cross for I was there at the foot of the cross and I heard him say, man, behold thy mother and woman, behold John, when did you hear him? John said, I heard him that, that, that Sunday morning when he got up out of the grave and he said, peace unto you. John said, I heard him with my ears. Let me tell you this, I didn't live in the first century, but I thank God that one day I heard his voice for myself. As a matter of fact, I can tell you this, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one. Lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus. Just as I was. I was weary. Worn and sad. But I found in him. A sweet old resting place. And he has made me glad. Are you glad about it? But not only did John say we heard him with our ears. But John said we looked upon him. Now, 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 now watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Y'all sit down. I ain't there yet. I got seven minutes and 25 seconds. John. John. John, John said, I, I, we didn't glance at him, but we looked at him. It sounds much like uh, he says there in Acts chapter number 3 when they see that man that was lame at the gate of the temple called beautiful uh, begging alms and, and they said look on us. Yeah. That, that means don't just glance at us, take a look at us. Yeah. Yeah. Silver and gold have I none, yeah. but such as I have uh -huh. give I unto thee in the name uh -huh. of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Take up your bed and walk. John said, I didn't just glance at him, I looked at him, I, I studied him with my eyes, I, I beheld him every day. And as a matter of fact, John said, I beheld his glory, uh, as, as one writer said, we beheld his glory as of the only begotten Son of God, uh, full of grace and truth. That's what John said in his Johnine, uh, his Johnine gospel. John said, we studied him with our eyes, we, we studied him even before he was uh, crucified, but after he was crucified and he was given a new glory 
glorified body and he came in the room and the doors being shut we looked at him and saw that indeed it was him that we had known all these years for three and a half years we looked at him and saw him it was indeed the same one that we saw as the wind and the waves were dashing against the ship and we went down on the belly of the boat and stood over him while he was sleeping it's the same one that we saw go up on the deck of the ship and declare to the wind and the way peace be still he's the same one we set at him with our eyes friend I don't know how you feel about him but I tell you what I'm looking for Jesus you know we got Easter coming up and so many people coming to show off their new dress and show off their new suit but what I would you to know is that at the end of the day people don't need to see you somebody need to see Jesus Maybe our churches would have some more power again. If people stop trying to be seen and start trying to show better instead. Stop trying to let people see you and start helping people see Jesus and him high and lifted up. After all, it was Jesus that said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Said we, he's an evidence word, we held him with our hands. Yeah, it was John that, that uh, uh, was with uh, uh, them as they put the dead body of Jesus into the tomb. But I'm so glad that he said, he said we've experienced him even after that. Uh, Mary tried to touch him after he had risen from the dead. He said, don't touch me, Mary, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But by the time they get back to uh, uh, Thomas, and Thomas said, I won't believe unless I put my finger in his hands. And I won't believe unless I thrust my hand in his side. Jesus said, Thomas, it is I. If you need the evidence, go ahead and put your finger in my hands. Go ahead and put your, put your uh, hand in my side and believe that I am risen. Yeah, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is evidenced. And if you would, but trust him, you'll find that he'll be evidenced in your life. Can I get a witness here? But not only is he an eternal word, and not only is he an evidence word but I want to tell you that he is an essential word can I get a witness here yeah for John said he is uh, the word of life ain't the Lord all right yeah in the gospel of John Dr. Allen uh, he calls him in one half the logos that is uh, the mind of God. But in uh, the second half of the gospel, he calls him the life or the zoe. That is uh, that energy uh, and that spirit uh, that animates men. Can I get a witness here? Yeah, I'm glad uh, that God just wasn't able uh, to bring men to life in the Old Testament. But he's able to make dead men alive today. He is the word of life. Can I get a witness? We're living in a dark age, but God can still bring life. Boys are running the street with guns in their hands taking what they can't give but taking what they didn't deserve to take can I get a witness here if we want to see life in our streets again they need the word of life have I got a witness oh, I'm glad that I got somebody who will give me life ain't he all right we got fellowship uh, with somebody. Uh, when you're dead, uh, he'll bring you back again. Uh, when you're down, uh, he'll pick you up. Uh, if you're lonely, uh, he'll be your friend. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, what a friend uh, we have in Jesus. Oh, our uh, sin uh, and grief to bear. What a privilege. Uh, it is to carry ah, every thing to God in prayer. I believe I feel all right tonight. 
Oh, what peace we often forbid. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Good evening now. Fare thee well. I'm glad we got a fellowship with Jesus, the Son of God. We got fellowship with Jesus, God's only Son. We got fellowship with man's only Savior. We got fellowship with Adam's creator. We got fellowship with Enoch's walking companion. We got fellowship with Noah's ark builder. We got fellowship, have I got a witness here, with Abraham's ram in the bush. We got fellowship with Jacob wrestling partner. We got fellowship, have I got a witness here, with all of those that found out he will be what you need. We got fellowship with David's great shepherd. We got fellowship with Solomon Rose of Sharon. We got fellowship with Daniel's lion tamer. We got fellowship with the fourth man in the fire. Ain't he all right? Well, goodbye now and fare the well. But oh, I'm glad we got a sweet fellowship with a savior who died on the cross. Do y'all know he died? He died for my sin. He died for your sin. He died till death died. He died till grace was satisfied. He died till justice was paid. Oh, he died. Out on the cross, they buried him in a barber tomb. But right early, when y'all say early, right early, one Sunday morning, he rose. Oh, power! Oh, power! Oh, 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 oh. What a word. What a word. Amen. I will trust in well I will We come now to extend an invitation. But as you come by letter of Christian appearance, count every baptism will come. Come while the blood is still running warm your veins.
Amen. We've done as the Lord has commanded us to do, but yet we know there's still room for more. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. We do thank God for such a powerful word tonight. Amen. On the opening night of our first union of 2024, and we're so glad that God connected us with such a powerful man of God, Amen. Reverend Taylor. Amen. Amen. I really enjoyed myself tonight. And I'm just so um, on fire right now. I've been excited. Amen. This is a revival. This is, for, this is for us to be revived. Amen. And I think we're off to a great start. Uh, what a wonderful word. Amen. He talked about that eternal word. Amen. And I thank God for his word. And we're just so very grateful. Uh, Reverend Taylor, we thank you. This man poured so much of himself when he said, I just start praying for you, brother. Because he looked like he just gave you all he had today. And I just thank God for him being obedient and just really giving us the word and with the way God gave it to him. So thankful today. And now we're going to go ahead now and pass this over to our moderator. And... Um, just want to say thank you all for coming out tonight. And please tell someone to come back tomorrow. Go home and tell someone. Call someone on the phone and tell them we had a good time last night. Amen. We had some good music. We had some good words, just praise and worship. I enjoyed myself. I did. And I am excited about what God has in store for us. I love you, Bethel Baptist Association. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give our union president a rowdy hand clap of praise for being willing to take on this task. Listen, um, I think is Sister Meyer's gonna give announcements or you got them? All right, right, right before we, we do this, um, you know, prayer is, is awesome because um, one of the things that makes an association successful is people working together. So somebody say together. Let's bless the Lord for our lecture, um, talking to us about unity. Um, he, he was on point. He started on time. Um, so please be here on time tomorrow so that we can get the rest of um, what he has for us. Um, if you have a handout, go home tonight, look it over, study those scriptures that he's going to teach us on tomorrow, and that way it'll resonate in your soul a little bit better. Amen. But Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I am so glad that the Spring Hill Church don't want to get rid of their preacher. Preachers up here know what I'm talking about. That boy did it tonight. Didn't he do it? I'm glad Pleasant View ain't looking for no preacher. <laughs> and, and, and then uh, Pat Tillman say he, he gave it all to us. Uh-uh, he, uh -uh, he got to go find some more. He got two, I'm his friend, he got two more nights. And I tell you, he blessed us tonight, fellowship with the word. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. What a mighty, mighty good word. Um, and I tell you, if you didn't get that tonight, it's something, something wrong. Some, amen? Amen. You should have learned that fellowship ain't only eating chicken together. Y'all learn, y'all eat chicken back there and then go out there and cuss each other out. Yeah. What a mighty, mighty word. I am so excited to see these pastors. Give these pastors a hand clap of praise. Amen. Thank God um, for, and then we have our young Smith is here tonight. He is our first, second vice. Amen. Second vice president of union. Amen. We bless God for him tonight. And, you know, we, we're going to utilize what we got. Amen. Amen. Now, listen, here's the deal. Uh, 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 don't worry about who's not here. Amen. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, but when they, when they call you, because they're going to ask you, what, what happened? You say, what, what happened last night? Girl, it was so good, you better come tomorrow. That, that's all you got to tell them. And don't, don't go tell them nothing else, just come tomorrow. 
And then we got our queen here. Where is our queen? Hey, she's in it. Come on, get on, get on up. Um, come, come on, walk down, walk, walk, walk down. Uh, Sister Sheila is our queen for Bethel. Amen. That's it. Amen. Bless God for our queen. Now, on tonight, on tonight, if, if I'm right, because, you know, I mess something up. They got pork chop and what else? Pork chop and fish and french fries. French fries, that's right. And it costs, I was finna mess up. It costs $15. Now, at Pleasant View, if you give 20, you get no change. Cause we don't keep change here. Somebody say amen. So just come on, look at that sister back there looking at it. Y'all help me back there now over here. It's, it's a good soda, amen. Amen, amen, it's a good soda. Nothing wrong with having a little fun, amen. Listen, we gonna get out your way, all right. Uh, please support her. Um, now, look at your clocks. Look at your watch. We started at seven o'clock and we're leaving before nine. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Announcements. Bless you, bless you. Amen. And for those of you that don't quite know me yet, I don't like to be on the bottom of nothing. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. And, and so uh, our choir, Bethel Choir, is going to be rendering the song services on Sunday night. That is the opening service. Now, our friend, my brother, uh, Dr. Lance G. Mills, will be delivering the message. And so we're going to be uh, raising all kind of noise, singing, amen? And we need more than five people. Amen. So please come to rehearsal, and let's please be there on, uh, the first, on, that, on that Sunday, which is the 7th, amen, um, at the Embassy Suites in Kissimmee, all right? Amen. I think we're done. Um, I don't see Sister Simone, amen? Um, the only announcement I have is call somebody tonight and um, tell them to come to the revival tomorrow because you're in for, we're going to go higher and higher. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is our health care ministry. Come on, give Sister Brown a hand clap of praise. I wanted to announce that Bethel will have their first responders workshop on Saturday, April the 6th from 10 to 1230. This will be at Spark Level Missionary Baptist Church in Cherry Lake. And who should attend? Ushers, health professionals, health and wellness ambassadors, and those who just want to improve the health in your church. What we will have, the American Heart Association will be coming out and providing a self blood pressure measuring um, initiative and they will have hands only CPR. We have selected five churches that when we leave they will receive blood pressure cuffs to use in their church and CPR uh, machines to continue to do it. This is a part of uh, our moderator asked that all of our churches have health and wellness ministries. So we're starting with the five churches. Uh, thank you, Pastor Solomon Baker, for being our host church. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Let's participate in that movement. Pastors, any announcement? Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Let us stand for our benediction.
Amen. We're not going to give a benediction tonight. We're just going to pray that God will cover you, God will shine on you, and God will give you strength to come back tomorrow. Look at somebody, shake their hand, tell them you're loving, and have a good night.